Hey, 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 happy Tuesday. Pull up a chair, come on, pop in, relax, because I'm celebrating the 400th episode of The Daily Dope. That's right. It's going to start right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com, of which I happen to be the Grand Poobah, the founder and editor-in-chief. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. If this is the first time you've actually caught the show, keep in mind, this is very, very casual. It's talking about tabletop gaming news and chatting with people in, in chat as well. So, tonight is Monday, I should say, duh, Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> November 26th. What the, what day is it? What's going on? So I'm so excited about this being the 400th episode. It's like, I don't even know what day it is anymore, right? So it is Tuesday night, November 26th. As I mentioned, this is episode 400 of the Daily Dope. I didn't even think I'd make 50. So I, I actually, somebody had uh, kind of tweeted to me and they said, wow, you know, that's really impressive. Way to go. 400 episodes. I'm like, yeah. And there's also 345 other videos on the Gaming Gang channel that are first looks and reviews and interviews and so on and so forth. So if you are watching live, I do want to point out, chat is available on YouTube. It's not on screen. It's one of the ways that I kind of keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay, but I do pay attention to chat. So if you'd like to say howdy, or maybe you've got a question or a comment, by all means, fire away. I will respond. So we've got uh, chat is already cooking. So John Vogel's here. John was first in the door. Kabuki Kid, good to see a double K. Vampire Online has arrived. We haven't seen Vamp in a while. Flaming Huron is here as usual. Viper Dave has arrived, amazingly enough, before the show ends. <laughs> Dave normally pops in just before I say, well, that's it for tonight. I don't know. I think I think he's psychic. This is how it works. Brian Sweet is in as well. Good to see you, Brian. I know Brian's been here before. And... Of course, the madman is in chat also. So let's see. Yes, thank you very much on the congratulations for 400 episodes. Hey, thank you very much for kind of sticking with me and hanging out. I would feel really stupid if nobody showed up to chat. And just be like, yeah, here's the news. Which, you know, early on was kind of like that. But, you know, just had to, had to get the show going. So, um... So Kabuki Kid says, I imagine we might not see Dan tonight. Yes, Dan from No Enemies Here. Uh, he's in Florida. Oh, that's cool. Sweet. Excellent. Very nice. Uh, the Madman had mentioned, yes. I was going to say, I saw this on Twitter. I see he just mentioned this on chat as well. Uh, he's listening on the way to the airport because he was going to be picking up his wife at the airport. And the flight's delayed. So I guess he's going to kind of kick back uh, on the drive and uh, hopefully his Wi-Fi hangs in there, right? So, uh, and Viper Dave says, my girls were only 25 minutes late and they came from Denver. We got, oh, wow. They flew in from Denver. You got super lucky. Because there what were like 350 some flights canceled today out of Denver. Uh, and uh, I used to fly out of Denver quite a bit when I was uh, transporting the RVs around the country, which I kind of miss. I just, I miss going all these different places around the country that I'd never been before. Uh, I just don't miss the whole trying to get on a plane last minute. Mm -mm. So yeah, so Viper Dave's like, oh yeah. All right, so we got a big show tonight. I got a lot of news. There is a rumor floating around. There might be some giveaways going on. I don't know. You're going to have to keep watching. I don't know. You'll find out. I don't know. I don't know. What am I getting? 
What, what am I getting? So, anyway. Uh, also, uh, once again, I had a couple of people send me emails asking if I'm bald, if that's why I wear a baseball cap all the time. And the answer to that is no. My hair is always just a mop. So, that is why, and of course now it's all flat, but uh, that's why I wear a baseball cap for the show, because my hair is usually all over the place. It's uh, usually a mess. And it grows like a weed, so you know, it's like I'm not gonna go get a cut every couple of weeks. All right, so let me grab a sip here, and we will jump on into the news for tonight. You noticed I got my other holiday cup because I'm right-handed. It's kind of weird trying to drink from the like snowman cup here because I was like, okay, well, drinking like that, what? No holiday image there. Uh, you may not notice this, but there is like a little overlay over my head with little Christmas lights as well. Holiday lights. Let me say holiday lights. I won't say Christmas lights because there are all different holidays that people celebrate during the winter time or the approaching winter time. So uh, I do not want to just say Christmas, right? So winter holiday lights. There we go. All right, so let's jump on into the news because there is an interesting tile lane game, which is based on Charles Darwin's travels aboard the Beagle. This is up for crowdfunding on Kickstarter for Artana. And here's the dope on, on the origin of species. On the Origin of Species is a two to four player strategy board game in which each player will step into the adventure of young Charles Darwin on the HMS Beagle's expedition through the Galapagos Islands, examining the local species and uncovering their natural history. Trace connections between the flora and fauna you discover as the Beagle journeys through the islands. Find help from the ship's crew and uses for the tools in your luggage. Excel in your research and lead the way among your naturalist colleagues. Assist Charles Darwin during the Beagle journey across the Galapagos Islands, discovering new species and researching them in order to improve your knowledge. During their turn, the active player must choose between two actions. They can either research and put two research pieces on two different species tiles on the board, gaining the knowledge of air, land, or water habitat, or they can discover. They can use the acquired habitat knowledge to place new species tiles on the board, obtaining victory points and evolution, characters and object cards. Additionally, you will advance the beagle on its track. Game finishes when the beagle reaches the last space of its trip, leaving the archipelago through New Zealand. The players score the evolution points according to the final goal card, adding them to the points obtained during the game. The player with the most points on the scoring track, you guessed it, wins. There is a uh, short video, about a minute and a half, for this Kickstarter. Let's, uh, let's give it a look. The year was 1831. A young English naturalist just received a fateful letter, one that would dramatically change the course of his life and that of the history of science. At the age of 22, Charles Darwin was elected scientist of the HMS Beagle. Four years later, the Beagle arrived at the strange and ominous volcanic archipelago of the Galapagos Islands. On your journey through these islands, you will assist Darwin in researching the local habitats and taking notes of the traits you find. When you have gathered enough data, you will be able to use your research to incorporate the natural history of other species in the area. Scoring points and expanding the player's shared understanding of the local fauna. Use characters such as Bart Sullivan and Conrad Martins to aid you on your study of these new habitats. Or maybe you'll even discover a new species, enhancing your knowledge of the world as well as granting other rewards, like a handy scalpel or a magnifying glass. This cycle of research and discovering new species continues until the beagle reaches its final destination.
and only the most astute researcher will come away victorious. On the origin of species is for two to four players, ages nine and up, plays in about 45 to 80 minutes. I don't know why they don't just say 90. And the project is over 500% funded. You can reserve a copy of the game for a $25 pledge through December 5th, with an expected delivery date of May 2020. So, uh, Vampire Online says, looks interesting, not sold on the artwork, looks kind of meh. Double K says, I'm cool with the artwork. Jorge Rodriguez has arrived. Good to see you, Jorge. Thanks for popping into chat. I got to admit, I, I like the art style. I mean, it does have kind of like that Autobahn uh, kind of look to it, you know? So I, I think this looks like a pretty cool game. Looks pretty interesting. So, and it's only a $25 game. Looks like it's got, uh, got a little bit of meat on its bones. All right, so Viper Dave popped in. So uh, his, the girls want to go get some ice cream. So enjoy your ice cream. Have a great Thanksgiving, too. Thanks for popping in. If you get a chance, uh, you might want to take a peek at this uh, this show before 9 o'clock Central because uh, I'm not going to give anything away. But maybe I'll be giving something away. Anyway, good to see you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Viper Dave. All right, anyway, so uh, I think this looks pretty cool. Looks like you're getting quite a bit of game for 25 bucks. But I don't know. I have no idea. All right, so for the war gamers out there, there is a new title that was added to GMT's P500. I've got the dope on Seas of Thunder. World War II was the largest and most violent extended naval war in history. From September 1939 until the surrender of Japan, which was 1945, the high seas were a global battle zone filled with mighty battleships, nimble cruisers, silent hunters, and flat tops bristling with planes. Before our eyes, we witnessed the changing of warfare on the high seas as the thunderous old guard fell to air power and submarines. Raiders prowled the open waters and the carrier showed its true diversity and adaptability. Ability. Seas of Thunder not only allows players to recreate the Atlantic or Pacific theaters of the war, but to see how challenging the entire picture was for their leaders. How do you protect the globe from German raiders? How do you, or how desperate was it for Britain when France fell and they were left to fight Germany and Italy alone on the high seas? What is the right balance for the Soviet fleet split between two distinct fronts? Baltic, Black Sea, actually four. Baltic, Black Sea, Arctic, and Pacific. If the Mediterranean force weakens for the Allies, where do they draw ships from? Does Japan strike quickly or play for attrition when they arrive on the halfway point? Will America fight in two fronts, three or four? In Seas of Thunder, players will experience the tension of too much sea to cover with too few ships, the frustration of being caught unprepared, or the intensity of a vital stand contesting a high-value sea area. Victory is neither sudden nor guaranteed. In each battle, the flight of Catalinas, the lack of anti-submarine warfare, the improper distribution of air power, or even a missing minesweeper could be the difference between success or failure. Seas of Thunder is for two to eight players. Pretty wild, up to eight players. For ages, I'm guessing, 14 and up, it's usually what I assume. And it does carry a P500 price of $45. It will carry an expected MSRP of $65 if it reaches the P500 mark, which in reality is usually more than 500 Not always, but it is usually more than 500 I think a lot of it has to do with, with the P500, I think. Some of it has to do with like the design team sometimes. So like if if it's for an example, it's something like James M. Day or like Panzer or something like that. They're gonna go with like 501. Because <laughs> they know 
it's going to, you know, do well. Sometimes with some newer designers, maybe not. That said, one of the designers of this game is Jeff Horger, who did uh, Thunder Alley, which is awesome. Uh, he also did, is it Grand Prix? Is Grand Prix the one that's the the uh, Indy 500? Plus, he's supposed to be working on, uh, I want to say he's working on kind of a, as far as I know, kind of a cars, car war-ish, dark future uh, vehicular game maybe somehow along the lines of uh, Thunder Alley. I don't know. So, uh, anyway, so so John Vogel says, yeah, some folks already have it on pre-order. Yeah, this just this just hit the P500 within the past few days. And Flaming Heron asks, eight players, different countries. I want to say that there are six combatants for the game that I saw. Because there's way more information on the GMT website as far as Seas of Thunder. Uh, but I, I want to say, I thought it said there were six nations. So I would take a guess if you're doing eight players, then you might have a couple of British players. You might have a couple of US players, maybe a couple of German players. I don't know. I have no idea. I almost get the feeling that this is almost along the lines of... Um, I want to say like diplomacy at sea, but could play out like that. Although I'm sure the sides are set. It's not like, oh, well, the Americans and Germans, well, they're allies or anything like that. Anyway, the reason why I jumped out of that uh, that image, the slideshow there, didn't want to mention, supposedly on Friday, Steve Jackson Games is going to launch their Kickstarter for Car Wars. We'll find out. I know they've been doing their like free kickstarter stretch goals which involved people like tweeting and liking stuff on facebook and, and things like that taking a kind of a peek at what i've been able to see i don't know i i i don't know a lot of cards a lot of dice a lot of like custom dice and things like that so i don't know i have no idea if it's what it's going to be like i will share the news when i'm back on monday I will be sure to share the Kickstarter. I will make an exception. As you know, normally I do not share Steve Jackson Games news. Just, you know, they don't they don't like me. They've never given me anything to review in years and years and years. Never. I mean, really. That's why I don't even bother with them. But uh, because it is Car Wars, I will share that news. So Flaming Huron says, I must admit, I do like sea battle games. I've always been a naval gamer. Love naval games. That's why we play uh, Fletcher Pratt's. So, I mean, it's not really, you know, it's more of a, you know, estimating distance sort of game, but uh, introduced my nephew and his friends to it, and they loved it. So, all right, back to the news. Back to the news. So, if you're in the mood for some lighter fare, then you might be interested in the Kickstarter that is for, whoops, there we go, Loot of Lima which is from BoardGameTables.com. I've got the dope. In 1820, there were uprisings in Peru, so the Spanish government decided to move its treasure from Lima to Mexico for safekeeping. The crew of the ship to transport the loot turned pirate and hid the treasure on the island of Cocos. Now you are trying to find it, but you'll need to share some information with your fellow pirates to make sure you find it before the Spanish catch you. In this challenging deduction board game, Loot of Lima, the island of Cocos has 24 locations, 8 on the shore, 8 in the forest, and 8 in the mountains. The treasure is hidden in two of these locations. The game has a token for each of these locations, and at the start of the game, two tokens are placed back in the box, with these tokens indicating where the treasure is hidden. Better make sure that uh, nobody looks at those two tokens. The rest of the tokens are then passed out evenly to the players. These represent places you have already searched and know where the treasure is not hidden. Each turn, players roll three 12-sided dice to determine which questions they can ask their opponents. For example, how many locations have you searched between the southwest and the northwest? Or how many locations of the forest have you searched between the west and the south? 
players use the answers to these questions to build overlapping clues, figure out all the locations that have already been searched, and eventually discover which locations haven't been searched. Thus, where that treasure is going to be hidden. So there is a short video for Loot of Lima. It's kind of a bizarre video, I'll tell you that right up front. So after you watch it, you can tell me if it's kind of a kind of an oddball video for this Kickstarter. Anyway, here we go. Do you find deduction games too easy? Been solving too many murders without really pushing your brain? Talk to your game group about Loot of Lima. Loot of Lima will transport you back to 1820, where you join forces with other pirates to search the island of Cocos for a buried treasure. You want to find the treasure before the other pirates, but the Spanish are coming to arrest you all. So you've agreed to share some information with each other. Hopefully you can piece together the complicated puzzle and be the first to find the loot. Loot of Lima isn't a pill. It's a take-as-needed, challenging, treasure-hunting deduction board game for three to five players. Side effects include involuntary shouts of, how am I supposed to use that information? Compulsive head scratching, puzzled looks, which may persist after you stop playing, and random aha moments. If your Loot of Lima game lasts more than three hours, consult the rule book immediately. Loot of Lima is over 300% funded and is for three to five players ages 12 and up. It plays in around 75 minutes. Sometimes I wonder where these companies pull these numbers from. Why don't you just say 90 or under 90 minutes? You can reserve a copy of the game at the $29 pledge level through December 12th. Expected delivery is July of next year. So, Jorge Rodriguez says that commercial is hilarious. I thought it was kind of funny, but I also thought it's kind of bizarre. And I don't know if that like might turn some potential supporters of the Kickstarter off. I don't, I don't know. Got to be honest, I know pretty much nothing about BoardGameTables.com, except they mainly sell board game tables. But they have come up with some, they do have some board games that they've created as well. So it could be cool, especially if you like deduction games. Uh, you know, it's, I'm sure it's a lot meatier than something like Clue. So... All right, let's move on into some role-playing game news because Bundle of Holding has a brand new offer just arrived to save loads of dough, and I've got the dope on the Indie Cornucopia number seven, Adventura. In time for the American Thanksgiving holiday, we present this Indie Cornucopia seven, our seventh annual collection of top quality, small press tabletop role-playing games. For just $12.95, you get all three complete games in our starter collection as PDF eBooks. You get Five Torches Deep from Sigil Stone Publishing, Ben Dutter, Belly of the Beast, Perseverance, uh, co-designed this streamlined modern old school game of risk and reward resource management in the dungeon depths. Sigmata, this signal kills fascist from Land of Noop. Power, uh, radio-powered cyberpunk partisans fight a dystopian government crackdown in a timely political game by Chad Walker. There's also Bubblegum Shoe from Evil Hat Productions. Channel your inner Veronica Mars in this gumshoe system RPG of teen investigators from Emily Care Boss, Kenneth Height, and Lisa Steele. And if you pay more than the threshold price of $25.15, You'll level up and also get our spectacular bonus collection with four more RPGs worth an additional $59. There's Blades in the Dark from 1-7 Design, John Harper's phenomenally successful game of Scoundrel Cruise on the rise in the haunted city of Duskvold. There's Kids on Bikes from Hunter's Entertainment and Renegade Game Studios 
They didn't put that in their sell sheet info, but that is the case. Small Town Youngsters uncovers strange things in this platinum-selling rules-like game by John Gilmore and Doug Lewandowski. It's also been featured on Geek & Sundry. There's also Alas Vegas from Magnum Opus Press. Waking without memory in a dark desert, you stagger into a surreal Sin City in this innovative four-session, four-game master, role-playing game of Kafka-esque personal horror by James Wallace and several top-ranked designers. Then finally, there's Imp of the Perverse from NDP Design. Nathan Paletta, Worldwide Wrestling, sends you monster hunting in 1830s Jacksonian Gothic America, where your personal imp tempts you to become as monstrous as the things you hunt. <laughs> so, gotta point out, this is a really nice bundle of holding. And uh, of course, this just launched, so you've got 20 some days. I'm sure, I'm sure it's almost all the way through December for you to be able to save big on these. So, excellent value here for these seven role-playing games. And I gotta say, Five Torches Deep, I thought is pretty new. But that's just come out within the past three months, maybe? So, pretty sweet, pretty cool. So, I'll have more of this about this bundle a little later in the show. So, Son of Oak has just launched a Kickstarter for a City of Mist starter box that launched today. I've got the dope. We are all legends in disguise. Even today, in our crazy world of modernity, ancient myths and legends are here among us, within us. They awaken inside ordinary people like you and I, from plumbers to corporate executives, and we become their gateways into this world. They drive us to ask questions and search for the truth. They grant us miraculous powers. They demand that we make our life legendary. To prevent chaos, or perhaps to protect us, the forces of sleep struggle to keep us oblivious, trapped within our own everyday lives. Who are we? Are we ordinary or legendary? Maybe somewhat of both. That is a question that is beating in the heart of this City of Mist. Welcome to the City of Mist role-playing game. City of Mist is a multi-award-winning tabletop role-playing game where you play modern-day incarnations of myths and legends. Its cinematic flair and story-first tag-based game system has been widely acclaimed, making it a favorite among new and veteran role-players all over the world. In this game's epimonious city, people with legendary powers are hidden from the population at large. You and your friends will launch your series following your ragtag crew of ordinary individuals wielding legendary powers who investigate a city full of mysteries, crime, magic, and corruption to get to the truth. It'll be a detective story, borrowing heavily from film noir, with a lot of personal drama, self-discovery and sacrifice, and thrilling urban super-powered action. Are you ready to hit the streets? There is a Kickstarter video. It's a little less than two minutes. Let's take a peek right now. Under the constant glare of neon lights and the din and bustle of this town, there's a whole other world of strange and unusual going on. If you're awake enough to see it. You see, we're rifts, or gateways, for some legendary power trying to manifest itself within us. And while some of us use these newfound abilities for greed, power, and corruption, others, well, they try to do a little good in this world. Try to make this city a bit less of a nightmare than it usually is. So, we dig deeper and explore the depths of these legends inside us. But in doing so, we're left clinging desperately to the last remnants of what keeps us human.
The City of Mist starter box is jam-packed with role-playing game goodness. You can reserve a copy at the $28 pledge level, or you can get just the PDF of the starter box for a $15 pledge, or you can get the starter box as well as the two core books for an $89 pledge, $89, I should say, through December 19th. Expected delivery of the PDFs are actually this January, so pretty quick turnaround there. And the physical release will follow in April of next year. Do want to point out my review of the core box set of uh, the uh, GM's toolkit and the player's guide is going to pop this weekend. So I was waiting for them to launch this Kickstarter for me to do the review because I figured, yeah, we'd get a little more bang for the buck. Yes, I actually, the art style is pretty cool. The uh, whole graphic design of the books is pretty nice. I really like it. It, it kind of it pops. It really does. So uh, if you'd like to see more, by all means, I have a first look where I page through both the books. That video has been up, oh gosh, a month and a half or so, maybe two months, been up for a while. All right, so moving right along, let's move on to our last news piece of the night because Modifius Entertainment has released the latest supplement for Infinity role-playing game, and I've got the dope on Yujing. Order and Unity. Yujing, the state empire, governed by the party and policed by the emperor. The balance of the two makes the powerful G5 nation greater than the sum of its parts. Late as they were to the great space race that led to humanity proliferating among the stars, the people of Yujing have worked doubly hard to ensure they step beyond the long shadow of their nearest rival and rise to eclipse it. Viewed all too often with misunderstanding and mistrust from without, the Eugenese view themselves as a powerhouse nation that has the best interests of its citizens at heart, wholly committed to spiritual and economic betterment so that they may serve as a beacon for the entire human sphere the state empire strives hard to be at the forefront of every arena it enters into. On the battlefield, innovative servo-powered armor designs are providing the state empire army with a superior advantage, while cutting-edge technology such as the Ju, I'm sorry, Su Jian immediate action unit is changing the face of remote-led warfare. Not all is are as harmonious as the party's propaganda would lead you to believe, however. Citizens slip through the cracks of society, instead turning to crime to boost their status. The fractured ninja clans, who of course do not exist, now fight a shadowy war for dominance in the wake of the uprising. And the Emperor of Great Japan has torn his cities, or citizens free of an oppressive regime that treated his people as second rate, as best. Offering never before seen insights on the Jade Empire, this source book will take you far beyond the Yu Jing's Veil of Mystery. Right now, you can score the 120 page PDF from DriveThru RPG for $11.99. Cool beans. Uh, I have really not looked at the Infinity role playing game. I do know that it is really. Uh, based on the uh, Corvus Belli Infinity Miniatures game. So, pretty cool. All right, Doug Roberts has popped in. Good to see you, Doug. Thanks for joining me for episode 400. Thanks for joining the gang and I. So, anyway, so that is pretty much the main news for tonight. I uh, do want to mention there are some, uh, quite a few different black... Friday sales that have already started to pop for tabletop gaming. I don't have all of them. I'm going to give you a few, talk about uh, what I know is already out there. And also I will have a post over on the GamingGang.com where I will have links to the different companies that are offering Black Friday sales, Cyber Monday sales. Like I said, some of them already started. So for an example, drive through RPG, they've started their Black Friday sale. So has DM's Guild 
uh, drive through cards, drive through fiction, and I believe drive through comics. I don't know if Wargame Vault does a Black Friday sale. They don't seem that Wargame Vault just never seems that they don't do like the uh, Halloween freebies anymore at that site either. So I don't know. I do you want to point out, of course, drive through RPG happens to be uh, a good friend of ours because the gaming gang and thus the Daily Dope are affiliated with the One Bookshelf sites. So if you are going to go to, say, drive through RPG or Dungeon Masters Guild, they like to call it DMs Guild, by all means, please visit thegaminggang.com first, click on one of our links, and of course, if you do make a purchase, I get a little portion of that sale. But so many people actually use our, our links, that actually pays for the hosting for the website just about every month. So their Black Friday sale is on right now. I believe it runs through Cyber Monday, and I have seen about 33% off on tons and tons of PDFs. In fact, I took a look. There's over 53,000 PDFs that are on sale at Drive Through RPG. So my assumption is most things are on sale. I'm sure there are a few that aren't. I don't, I don't want to say everything's on sale because I'm sure that's not the case. But I do want to mention, uh, so... <laughs> Flaming Huron says, well, you're sure going to make some nickels and dimes this week for, from Flaming Huron. Hopefully, actually, just for Flaming Huron, I did put a DMs Guild ad right there on top of the Gaming Gang website. So, and then uh, I believe my drive through RPG ad is a little further down the front page. So, pretty cool. So, here's what's cooking right now that I have seen. Uh, Army Painter is doing 10 to 15% off, depending on what you're ordering. Uh, of course, Army Painter has brushes and paints and, you know, miniatures, gamers out there. They had some, some pretty cool sets. I have heard good and bad about their paints. So I'm not real sure, because I have never tried them. They're acrylics, but um, they are pretty popular. So... Uh, Flynn Heron's like, thanks, Jeff. Now I feel special. Uh, so Doug Roberts says, if you haven't already, take a look at Way of the Samurai on Kickstarter. Looks pretty cool. Would like to see what I think. Cool. Yeah, I will take a peek. Uh, a lot of times, I got to be honest, uh, a lot of Kickstarters are going to fly under my radar. Plus, I am not real keen on people out of nowhere. I uh, will just send just a blanket like mass email out to people who cover the hobby. And it's just like, oh, here's our Kickstarter. You can't be bothered to send me a personal email that says, hi, Jeff, I'm not going to cover it. So, but a lot of times I, I just stumble across Kickstarters that I think look pretty cool. Like, for an example, the Charles Darwin game on the origin of species. I just stumbled across that. And I was like, wow, this looks pretty cool. And for 25 bucks, I was like, damn, that's pretty sweet. Plus, I think it's like $4 shipping to the U.S. because it's out of Europe. So I was like, wow, that's pretty nice. All right, so on with uh, more of the Black Friday sales. Aries Games has a Black Friday sale going on. It is up to 80% off on some of their lesser-known titles, some of their titles that didn't do that great. So, I mean, there's there's like $20 games you can get for 5 bucks for like like $40 games you can get for 10 bucks. I will point out your entire line of Galaxy Defenders is like 75% off. So you can get normally Galaxy Defenders is like just the core game is like $90. Right now you can get it for 30. Of course, I'm sure they probably have, you know, <laughs> limits on how many of these they've got in stock. So, of course, the sooner you act, the better. Uh, so, did want to point that out. Holland Spiel is also having a Black Friday sale. I did mention on last night's show, Escape from Hades, which is from Fred Manzo and Herman Lutman, a couple of good friends of mine. It is a uh, solitaire science fiction game. Looks kind of cool. Looks pretty kind of gonzo, which I definitely dig. So, there's $5 off all of their boxed games. Then, 
if you do any orders of $100 or more, you get 10% off that. And if you purchase two or more games, you will get uh, Toledo War absolutely free. So I think every year, I might be wrong, because I gotta be honest, I've never played a Holland Spiel game. As far as I know, I think every year they do like a special game that they actually create as a giveaway for the holiday season if you buy you know so many games so i think that's what toledo war is i'm not positive so uh but i can tell you it's five dollars off of all their box games got over 45 of them plus 10 percent off orders of a hundred dollars or more mantic games has uh deals for their miniatures various different miniatures games they're about 20 percent off it looks like it's not everything it looks once again like like overstock that they might have. Although I got to point out, they've got Dreadball Extreme, which that's one of their big games, right? It's like that like sports, kind of sci-fi sports game with miniatures. Uh, it's $14.99, and it also includes like a player handbook, so which is, uh, which is additional to what normally comes in the box. That's a pretty sweet deal. And they do have some, uh, some booster packs of I shouldn't say boosters, bubble packs. Let's say bubble packs of some of the uh, Walking Dead minis or like All Out War and then their skirmish game as well. Renegade Game Studios is also doing a Black Friday sale. It is going on right now. You can save up to 40% on select titles. Once again, looks like these are titles that may not have gone over as well as they were hoping. But there are some uh, some games out there that I did cover and provide news pieces for. So, I don't know. So, once again, up to 40% off on those. Warlord Games, another miniatures company. Uh, they're doing specials that are on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So, you have to check in with them to see what's going on. They, have, they launched this, I want to say, I think it was like late last week. And... They've had deals where they they do like 25% off an entire line of miniatures. So I know they had a 25% uh, off um, the Black Powder, so which is like uh, shot and pipe. Well, yeah, yeah, up to I think I think Black Powder runs up to the American Civil War, I think. So anyway, it was uh, it's not going on now. So it, they're limited time sales. So you got to keep your eyes peeled. Also, Weird Games, they're doing, I don't think they're really doing a sale. Looks like they've got some exclusive miniatures that uh, that you can purchase. There are, uh, there's a free miniature you get with a purchase. Then there, you get to choose some free minis for every $100 you, you spend. So that's going on. I didn't really see uh, a bunch of sale items. So I don't know, maybe that's just because I missed it. Because I was... Trying to grab some of these uh, a little bit last minute. So, as I mentioned, I will actually have a post. Probably be up tomorrow night as far as uh, the different Black Friday sales. So, and of course, I'll keep updating it throughout the weekend through Cyber Monday. We'll see what's cooking and uh, take it from there. So, try to save folks uh, some money on various different uh, tabletop games out there. So, that is it for the news. So I mentioned, oh, I should mention, uh, later on tonight, you will see my review of Bang the Dice Game, as well as the Undead or Alive expansion. So those will be up. I shouldn't say those. It's together. I did one review video for both. I do a bit of a how to play. Really enjoyed it. We've had a blast with it. So uh, that will be up later on tonight. I do have a War Game Wednesday review that will be out tomorrow. Even though I'm not doing a show, you will see. Uh, uh, I'll uh, leave that uh, secret. I should have another War Game review up this weekend as well. That I'll, I'll keep that as a secret too. Anyway, so I kind of opened the show and I mentioned, uh, hey, maybe there'll be like some giveaways or something like that, right? So I got to be honest, I can't like send out like board games. Right, I can't send physical stuff out because I am not somebody who does like Kickstarters to like uh, finance doing this. You know, I don't I don't keep my hand out going, hey, Patreon me or anything like that. In fact, 
I did a Patreon. It was doing okay. I just hated Patreon. Man, just the way they were treating some of the the uh, the patrons was just. So anyway, so I did mention yesterday if I was doing some giveaways, that meant that uh, I would be doing some role playing game stuff. So if you were fans of role playing games, then you would probably dig the giveaways. If you are not a fan of role playing games can't really help you <laughs> sorry anyway but you might recall i was talking about the bundle of holding with some really excellent role-playing games that are available so what i'm going to do here and this i'm doing this especially for people who are watching live or who watch the show in the next hour or so right because that's that's the big deal right i wanted folks to tune in watch the 400th episode live if they could. But I also know there are people out there like, say, for an example, like Viper Dave, who usually pop in just as shows ending or they catch the show like a few minutes after it starts, right? Because usually by the time I get all everything done, as far as my rendering and, and things like that, uh, there's there's already like twice as many people who have watched. So Kevin Thorpe is popping in. Good deal. Good to see you, Kevin. So Kevin's popping in towards the end of the show. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to let these kind of float past here, right? So you can kind of kind of refresh yourselves on, on what role-playing games we were taking a look at. So what I will do is, if you send me an email before 9 o'clock Central Standard Time, so that's going to give you an hour and 13 minutes. If you send me an email to Jeff McAleer at the gaming gang.com, just, uh, you can put the subject, just contest, right? Contest is fine. Get a little dry mouth there for a second. You may choose any two of the seven role-playing game PDFs, okay? All you need to do is you need to email me, once again, at jeffmacleer at thegaminggang.com before 9 p.m. Central Standard Time tonight. And you have to send me your email from an email that you can receive an email back from me. So, Hotmail just never works, okay? For some strange reason, Hotmail will block me trying to contact you. So do not use a Hotmail account. Uh, if you've got like Yahoo or Gmail, what have you, those are fine. So you're going to be able to choose any two of those seven role-playing games. And I will provide you with the PDFs uh, tomorrow. So you got your choice of, let's go back here. So we got Five Torches Deep. I, I'm not familiar with this game. I've heard good things. I am a fan of OSR, so that does appeal to me. Uh, Bubblegum Shoe is awesome. It is excellent. I did a review of this. It's one of my final written reviews. Thought it was fantastic. Imp of the Perverse, I know nothing about. I mean, I, I think I did a news piece on it because it sounded kind of interesting. Kids on Bikes, another fantastic RPG. This is very rules light and perfect for those of you who are trying to get teens into role playing games. Blades in the Dark. I am not I'm not familiar with it. I know it's everybody talks about how fantastic it is. A Las Vegas. I know nothing. I know nothing about this. Well, it does sound pretty unique. And then Sigmata. Uh, this signal kills fascist. I did a news piece on once again, I am not overly familiar with it at all. So I can tell you that Kids on Bikes and Bubblegum Shoe are excellent. Bubblegum Shoe, don't, uh, don't sell it short because I know a lot of people saw Bubblegum Shoe and they thought, oh yeah, it's just like a, like kids and stuff. No, it is, it can be fairly gritty. Granted, the characters are supposed to be like high school age teens or Maybe just out of high school, but uh, there's bite to it. Really, really well done. I gave it the, 
over a nine. I gave it over a nine. Kids on Bikes, same thing. Kids on Bikes is perfect. It's not as gritty as Bubblegum Shoe. So it is perfect for those of you who have younger kids. You'd like to introduce them to role-playing games or you want to play some one-shots where everybody's playing like kids. And it's kind of a horror mystery sort of thing. A little Stranger Things action, right? So there you have it. All you got to do, I'll repeat this one more time. All you have to do is send me an email before 9 o'clock Central Standard Time tonight. Just have contest as the subject and just tell me what two RPG PDFs you would like and I will email you them. Well, I will, I will send you an email for you to download those tomorrow. Cool deal? All right, so want to do, uh, like I said, want to do a little bit of a giveaway and especially for the people who tend to watch the stream all the time or those who, you know, catch it right after it ends. Because I, I do get emails and comments from people who just, you know, ah, damn, missed your live again. So, all right, Jorge Rodriguez is like, cool deal. All right, so hopefully it's a little something. Celebrate 400 episodes of The Daily Dope. On that note... Uh, no shows for the rest of the week. I was going to do a Wednesday show, and then I thought, why don't we take the holiday break? Nice 400 episodes, right? I thought that, eh, come back. I'm back on Monday, episode 401. So, uh, hopefully everybody has a wonderful Thanksgiving who are here in the United States who celebrates Thanksgiving. Uh, if uh, anybody out there lives elsewhere, that has a holiday this weekend. Happy whatever that holiday is to you as well. And of course, those of you who live places that there's no holidays going on, by all means, enjoy the rest of your week and have a fantastic weekend. Very safe weekend. Uh, for those of you in the U.S., we are getting, uh, a lot of areas are getting horrible, horrible weather. So if you are going to find yourself on the roads and you are in the midst of that crap, be safe. Be careful. All right. So <laughs> Kevin Thorpe's like, no, no holiday here. Oh, have a great weekend. Uh, and Doug Roberts says, yes, have a good Thanksgiving. Yes, everybody enjoy. Enjoy whatever holiday you might have. Time you spend with family and friends is very, very important. All right. So if you like this video, please give it a quick thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. And if you do, don't forget, ring that little bell, because not only will it notify you of when this stream goes live, it will also tell you when my reviews go up, my standalone videos go up. So, and of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. We want to mention there are reviews. We still do written reviews. I personally do not, but I do have correspondents who do written reviews, especially RPGs. So if you are an RPG fan and you're not visiting the gaminggang.com, you're missing out on a lot of good reviews. All right. So everybody who watched live tonight, thank you so much for celebrating episode 400 with me. Always appreciate you taking some time out to uh, join me in chat. That way I don't look like a doofus just blabbering away into the ether. But then again, if you watch the show after the fact, I appreciate you as well. So everybody out there, I will be back on Monday. Have a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy Black Friday. I'll be back Cyber Monday. And of course, until then, happy trails. <laughs>
So, if you would like to subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel, please click right here. If you want to check out the latest episode of The Daily Dope, click right here. And if you'd like to check out a randomly selected standalone video, by all means, click right here. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer, and thanks for watching.